So, so Andrew and, and Luke, I'm, I'm sure you really loved it when, when Kai was talking about uh, not paying commissions anymore. Does that, that fit well into your, your plans for the future? It was the best day of our lives. Yeah. But what it did was really kind of that we constantly need to rethink how to add value because these big venues, um, those bring visitors, but you need to bring value to be a good partner of them. So how do you, so how do you adjust uh, something? I mean, that's such a fundamental shift in how you're, I mean, they're basically an attraction is coming to you and saying, all right, guys, this is it. We're doing things differently. Like, what's your first, what's the first thing that popped into your mind? My first thing that popped into my mind when he said that to me was, well, this, would I want to go to this museum? And the answer is yes. And you know, it's a really cool museum. Like it's a, a brand that is just completely unique. And I think that you know we have to be, uh, I guess, uh, reactive and just be kind of open-minded about how we uh, how we work with all these uh, all these businesses. Ultimately, if the if the purpose of our organization is to get everything online and bookable by people, we have to you know think of creative solutions sometimes. Yeah, and you, Luke, you... Uh well, I, th I think it's, it's a change of, of how you get paid, right? So if you add value, there's still money to be made. So if you add value, like, uh, you know, we really push them to get new audiences from Asia and from the south of, of Europe, but also to help them to increase the sales of their, of their audio guide. And they are willing to pay your money, so, so no, no commission anymore which sometimes I like, you know, we're doing so much marketing and we're only having a an, an conversion rate of 12%. So 88% of the people are using our marketing money to just walk up to the venue and go up there. So it's a kind of, you need to have it in balance. And it was a kind of a shock, of course, uh, what, what's this? But it, it really kind of, of kept us innovative to find other ways to show that we add value and, and that we could earn money from it. Yeah, so, so Jean-Marc and yeah. Simone, I guess, so you guys, you don't have to pay commission anymore? How uh, do you, how yeah, do you feel about that? I love the Van Gogh Museum model, no commission. Let's, we'll try to implement that in the future. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's different, obviously, when you are uh, an attraction. But um, the So can I just, so you're a multi-city yeah. tour operator. But uh, you know, not the largest tour operator in the world, obviously, but grown quite a bit from from pretty amazing beginnings. Actually, w what kind of if you want to go in and make a change, like if you go in and kind of walk up to your partner, a trip advisor, or to get your guide, and you want to make a change, I mean, what's your, I mean, how do you how do you go about it? And if operators here, like, what advice would you give? Well, I mean, what we did uh, in, uh, in these years was always uh, focusing on the product. I mean, uh, it's not just about the commission. It's about conversion. It's about what uh, consumers want. So identifying, first of all, which channel, if you are an operator that um, uh, it's creating activities and tours, you need to identify who's your consumer, who's your target audience, because uh, nowadays uh, distributors are all different. You know. Uh, there are some that target more European customers, some more Americans. There are some platforms where uh, products tend to be more prone to discounting and deals where you see that um, what is cheap sells more. And there are other platforms where uh, there is more attention to quality. So first of all, identify what's uh, the right channel for your product and then try to pursue that direction without too much compromising. Jean-Marc, yep. so you're also an attraction. I mean, yep. I actually run kind of multiple attractions at, at so and it's M56 Group, but I've, I've always thought of it as like the brand Montparnasse. Yeah, uh, so um, we are running an observation deck uh, in Europe and in the US. So um, for Paris is a Montparnasse Tower. We are here in Berlin with the TV Tower. And we have two other up deck in the US, uh, one in Chicago and the second one in uh, Philadelphia. So what's your kind of reaction to, to Kai's talk? Is that something that you could, uh, that you could conceive of in the future uh, for your group? Yeah, of course. And uh, I think what we... Um, uh, I was very interesting about the, the first presentation with the Van Gogh Museum because uh, more or less we have the, the same approach. Uh, working with the OTA and OTS is uh, very important. Uh, but what we want to do is to, to build partnership and not to be um, in competition with them, you know? And sometimes when, uh, and maybe we will talk later about the bidding, uh, the keywords, and um, 
some, sometimes we have the feeling that it's not always a partnership. So we have to work together to define clearly uh, what is possible and what is not possible. Well, so well, since you brought it up, why don't, we, why don't we talk about that? So this is an issue that's been going on in, I mean, this is not just in this industry, but this has a 10, actually almost a 20 year history in hotels and also in airlines. There've been lawsuits about this and other parts of, of travel. So look, everybody, you know, everybody knows the TV tower. Every, you know, when you come to Berlin, everybody obviously knows you know, the Eiffel Tower and all of these great, these great attractions. This is what drives a lot of tourism. So of course you want to leverage that in your, I mean, you guys spend a couple of dollars with Google. Uh, I, I would imagine you guys spend a few bucks too. You want to be able to leverage that. So can you, how do you, how do you think about this when operators have complaints, you're bidding, a, you're bidding on keywords that are their, are their brands? So, I mean, I, th I think, you know, broadly speaking, the thing that I took out of Kai's um, uh, presentation was that it's, uh, it's about value. So he mentioned more than once that actually when he was talking about not paying commissions to, to OTAs, it was because he wasn't seeing the value in what they provided. And I think that that's a broader conversation. I can honestly say the number of conversations that I have about commissions are, are, are very, very small. Like actually what uh, operators are most interested on in when they talk to me is about you know how to increase, increase their bookings. And I think that comes back to your point because if we can increase their bookings and we're transparent with how we're gonna go about doing that, the thing that we can deliver these attractions and tour operators alike is a, is a huge global audience and we're very good at attracting that and making those uh, attractions and experiences bookable. So uh, Luke, wh I mean, what's your kind of take on this, you know, on, on this whole issue? Uh, when, you, when a partner comes to you and says, look, you've gotta stop bidding on our, on our keywords. Well, I think it's always a good discussion. I think it's discussion about yielding. You know, is it, are you able to drive the same number of bookings, but also with the number of revenue? I think it's not only about bookings, but also about revenue. And do you have a kind of a good discussion about, are you able as an external company to increase the conversion, to so to bring more people than you would have done by yourself? And are you also able to sell more expensive products so that the yield, the visitors multiplied by the revenue is higher because then you have a total different discussion. If it's about cannibalization, even if you're just a box office for a box office, you don't have a discussion. Then you should stop with any advertising on anything. Um, and then you don't add any value. I think that's the discussion we have with our partners. And if they have a good team who are able to convert the people on site, which will also help them. So we even bring them tools to convert on their own website, really a kind of odd thing for OTAs. But we think we can only partner if we help them with that. So we, we love those discussions because it's about bringing more visitors, bring more revenue. So Simone, do you love those discussions? Uh, okay, so we are touched two different points here. Uh, the one about the branding is uh, obviously it's a very hot topic. Uh, most of the operators, I believe, that uh, besides working with distributors, they try to sell directly, and uh, we all try to build our uh, brand awareness. Uh, and every day it's more and more difficult and more expensive. We know that Google uh, AdWords, in specific, it's uh, uh, costing every year more and more. So to get a little bit technical here, Douglas, what happens is that uh, your, key, uh, your branded keywords are the one that they convert uh, the most. So when distributors, when OTA, they start bidding on, uh, on your brand name, besides that's very flattering, it's always <laughs> or damaging your direct sales. So we obviously have a conversation in a spirit of partnership. We try to mm -hmm. make sure that this doesn't happen. So uh, but, uh, I think, you know, um, talking about commission, uh, I'm I'm still fine and happy to pay a commission to uh, an OTA, to um, Viator, to uh, Tickets, uh, if they provide us uh, incremental business and they are very strong and they are very powerful to do it. And uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's not a, a big deal to, to give commission because they, they do the work for us and they find new, new business. Close to that, sometimes we, ha we, we could have the feeling that we, we are in competition. This is why we, we have to work together, and it's still a, uh, a positive discussion uh, that to, to clearly define what is possible and what is not possible for, for brands. So, uh, the, sorry, the conversation about commission has changed a lot in the past uh, uh, 
six or seven years. Uh, since the, I mean, six, seven years ago, there was uh, no algorithm, it was all manual, so the conversations about uh, commission were very straightforward. You know, we could negotiate positioning and things like that. Now, it's, uh, it's much more difficult to have a conversation about commission because you don't know really how much commission impacts the ranking of your product. There is this mystery of the algorithm that nobody discloses uh, and everyone has different algorithms. So uh, Andrew is going to disclose the mystery of the algorithm Perfect. today, actually, right? I understand. Uh, yeah, well, maybe in the bar afterwards. Okay, okay <laughs> so upstairs, okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so what's your, I mean, you look, so you get this question probably, uh, and your team's probably a thousand times, uh, a thousand times a day, like, how do I rank higher? Why am I not kind of ranked here? How does that kind of play? Can I pay you more and, and, and rank? Like, how does... Yeah, it, sure. I mean, we do get that question a lot. Usually it's a very specific question around why is this particular competitor above this one? And, you know, the uh, the short answer is that our, uh, our, our organic search listings are, are all listed based on quality of experience. Um, it's not possible to pay more um, to be higher in those listings. It's not possible to be on Boken and be higher in those listings. It's it's all based on quality of experience. So So my top tip for anyone that wants to be higher than their, uh, than their competitors would be to focus on their quality experience, uh, to ensure that they have the most five bubble tours in the most recent period of time. But actually, well, Simone's company is a very successful example of that. Like, you know, they've, they're on top of many of the algorithms, and, and most of that is because they've got five bubble ratings on everything. So, so you, you said something very important there. I want to come back to it in a second. But So Luke, if I'm an operator working with you, can I, is it, is there a mysterious algorithm that chooses your sort order or can I work with a partner or can I work with you to place a little bit, like what, how's your, your view on, on working with suppliers on the, the, the sort, uh, the sort yeah. order? Well, the, the algorithm is purely based on, on experiences, not only the experience self, but also if it's bookable, um, uh, you know, really fast, um, same day, you know, a lot of people first kind of two weeks before they are going to kind of visit our website to just kind of do some discovery. But then when they're in destination, they got some push notifications or some email, and then you must be able to be booked. So it's kind of the quality over the whole experience, so not only the kind of how people experience it, but also how to buy it. Can I get in with my mobile phone? Is it really a seamless experience, et cetera? So just I want to ask to the two online travel agencies here, so Luke and, and Andrew. So if I'm, uh, just in general, and uh, as an operator, I want, uh, look, I want, uh, I want to rank higher. Like, I want my, I want to be in the top slot, right, as much as possible. Like, where do I, like, what should, you know, the big picture, like, strategically, what should I be thinking about in terms of my product, in terms of my, like, what's, what do I focus on to make that happen? Uh, for me, it's exclusively around that traveler experience. So it is listed by review rating. So if, if that is your goal, then you need to be providing the best experience for the traveler, like, you know, end of story. There's no, there's nothing that you can pay. Um, there's no, no way of appearing higher because you've, uh, you've, because of any other factor. It is purely around quality of you, experience. And so do you guys... Yeah, that's, you, that's the same. Yeah. You guys buy this? Do you, you agree? Well, it, I think it depends really from the platform. We, we see the algorithms are all different and they weight different uh, aspects uh, in a different way. So probably there are some OTAs that they weight commission more than others. Uh, I mean, it is a kind of a mystery because you don't even know how far back uh, in the... Uh, when they look at the performance, they go one week, two weeks, a month, uh, how much is the revenue generated impacting the ranking, how much is the quality score, is it uh, taken in consideration or not? So it's, it's, it's hard, it's about play and see uh, when you change things, maybe sometimes it's a promotion that will put uh, the product go up, so it's play and change and see what uh, makes the product react, but again, it's a, it's a kind of a black box. Okay, so uh, yeah. Maybe to add, I think it's also different in the audience that, that is coming, you know. So the experience can be really great for families. But if then a kind of a couple is looking in your website and they are just clicking on different stuff, other things are appearing on top, then it's all about conversion and bringing additional revenue to the, uh, to the venues, to the operators. So, so it's, it's a combination of experience and also kind of being smart to convert the right people at the right time. So, Andrew, you said something kind of interesting there a couple of questions ago, I think. Right. So, you, so you said that Boken users 
are not preference in the sort order. So, I, I, so Boken is the, that's the reservation system that TripAdvisor acquired last year. The president of TripAdvisor Experiences actually said, yes, Boken users would be preferenced when he was speaking at arrival in September. Then your CEO kind of walked that back, so, and then you listed sponsored listings. So there's, I think there's, it's fair to say, um, I've probably just confused a lot of people <laughs> in the room, um, but so can you just lay out for us like what's going on there? Sure. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's fair to say that you know certainly what's uh, what's been written about this and and um, and uh, what we've actually said has, has definitely confused the uh, confused the issues. But just for the avoidance of doubt, um, our search listings are unbiased, um, so it's uh, they include Boken users and non-Boken users alike. So uh, Boken users are not being preferred in terms of our natural sort order. So um, that said, um, you know, we believe that we want to digitalize this industry. And a big part of that is making products bookable online and giving uh, all suppliers um, you know, uh, the best possible tools to be able to manage their business online. And, and Boken's an integral part of that. So, um, and you asked me about the, the sponsored listings. So, um, so again, we're always looking at uh, new uh, merchandising opportunities. A lot of this actually driven by feedback from suppliers. So we often get feedback from suppliers about, you know, question you just asked me, like how can you, uh, how can you be higher up on the rankings? How can you drive additional bookings? So, you know, one of the things that we're that we're testing, same way that we uh, we operate merchandising opportunities in our hotels and restaurants businesses, is um, is this idea of sponsored placements. So for now, it's uh, it's open to uh, to Boken users free of charge. Um, so we. Uh, we uh, list all el eligible products. There's a, a quality metric so that we make sure that we're only servicing um, highly reviewed uh, products, and then those products are generated at random uh, each time that the page re uh, so, refreshes. So Simone or uh, Jean-Marc, so your, your companies, you don't, do you use Boken? You, no. You don't? Uh, right now, we have a direct connectivity with, uh, with uh, Viator or TripAdvisor, so we don't use Boken yet. OK, so, so neither of these companies can have a sponsored listing. Not right okay. now. Would you like a sponsored listing on TripAdvisor? Um, why not? <laughs> OK, so what, no. what do you tell Jean-Marc? Well, so I mean, at the early stages, and we are testing this as an opportunity, and so we're testing it with our Boken customers. Mm. And okay. you know, but uh, you know, I, I hope to be able to roll that out in the future. But, um, okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, are there going to be more acquisitions of reservation systems? Are we going to see more consolidation? Do you want to come? And I'd, I'd like, I'd actually like all of you to, to. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we've uh, we've made our position clear, like very clear. You know, we acquired Boken last year. Um, we think that um, reservation systems are a very good way of uh, of digitizing the supply in this marketplace. Um, further than that, we know that. Um, the uh, average conversion rate for a um, for a supplier that uses a reserva reservation software is is about 50% higher than one that doesn't. So, um, reservation systems in general are good for good for travelers. That's it. They're good for travelers. So, so if others agree with us, then it wouldn't surprise me. Jean-Marc, uh, what was your reaction when these acquisitions took place? I mean, how did you you think about that and your relationship uh, with? I think we. We are not a, a that big company. Um, technology is the, is the key point, and uh, I'm sure in the in the very close future, uh, this uh, uh, like Ferrero, like Booking, uh, Bookun, sorry, uh, will be more and more visible, important in the market because it's a, it's a link between uh, all of us, the provider, like the attractions, the final customer. Uh, the, the OTA and it's um, it's a real big asset. So um, I don't think uh, uh, many uh, many of us will be able to to bypass this uh, this system uh, step by step. Uh, and would you ever consider you know as a result? I mean, a clear indicate driver behind the acquisitions. You want as many companies like Andrew and others to by making the software free and, to, and making it available for sponsored listings, you want as many companies to use the software as possible. I mean, is that enough of an incentive for you guys to consider to consider switching, Simone? And well, it's, I mean, for us, it's a, uh, it's a very complicated situation. The landscape is not clear in terms of... Uh, we, we are integrated with one uh, uh, channel manager, 
And obviously, uh, we are working now with the Bakun as well, because the reality is that we don't want to miss any train. Uh, but uh, at the same time, there are channel managers that are connected to some OTAs, some that are connected to others. So, so it's, uh, uh, it's not that clear. And probably the final result for us will be connected with uh, more than one and uh, using some with uh, some distribution, some others with uh, other distributors. Obviously, from our end, it's, uh, it's expensive. It's a lot of resources uh, to do you know, the, the integration. Yeah. So it's... And, and Luke, what was your take on when, when well, this news happened you know, last year? How did it change your, your thinking? Well, it didn't, it didn't change our thinking. Um, I think for, for booking, it was an, an obvious decision because they have so much demand and they know that what Andrew said, that the conversion is when you are connected to one of another system. So for them, it was also an ability to really monetize their own demand already. I think in general, there will be um, some acquisitions in terms of the booking and reservation system. I think there are five or 10 in, in every country, at least in Europe, and there will be private equity to kind of create economics of scale um, to create great businesses because they add value to the business of tour and, 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 and operators. But so the issue, obviously, of, uh, of a privacy of data, I think that it's in, in, the, it's in the mind of everybody. So uh, that, that's why I'm saying we probably, w w many other operators with us probably would be do the same. Uh, you look at maybe integra integrating with uh, uh, one channel manager with one distributor and keeping separate from another channel manager where you uh, integrate with another OTA if there is an ownership uh, between uh, OTA and yeah, our manager, I mean, because you don't want maybe to have you know, the idea of having data. Is that so? Is that almost a concern? Like, is that almost a flip? Like, you know, and Tao had mentioned this as well in the discussion earlier. He kind of cautioned uh, cautioned operators because of that point, because you don't want an online travel agency. You don't want a company that's also bidding on your on your your brand, for example. You're competing in marketplaces uh, to have access uh, to your data. That is that a you think that's a valid concern? A Again, I don't know how, how, let's say, how serious the concern, but it is a concern. So uh, uh, also for us, the, the most important thing is to get the highest level of connectivity because there is another factor in all of this. We are talking about different channel managers, but they are not all the same. There are some channel manager, managers that are more advanced. We are talking a lot about uh, yielding, dynamic pricing. Uh, some are more ready than others. Uh, so there are lots of variables. It's, it's really complicated for an operator to decide on which avenue to go and where to put resources for integration. There is a lot that you need to consider. Douglas, we have a question from the audience here. Unbiased uh, online rankings based solely on user experience sounds wonderful, but there's a reality disconnect because so many tour guides today at the end of the tour unabashedly ask, please go on TripAdvisor or wherever and rate me high. To the point, many of them will actually say my compensation is linked to that. Recent Airbnb trip we took, we got 13 emails after the tour saying, you haven't rated us yet, you haven't rated us that. So these awkward things where now customers' user experience goes down because they feel guilty if they don't give a good rating, they've stolen money out of the pocket of the tour guy. What say you? And Andrew, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I think it's, it's kind of connected to the, the theme that I well, both passionately believe in and the things that, that I suggested earlier on. Like, you know, this is ultimately about traveler experience. For me, receiving 13 emails, you know, soliciting a review is, is not a good traveler experience. So, um, you know, ultimately, we want to provide that as, a, as an OTA, and I'm guessing you know, whatever tour operator that guide worked for as well would want to do the same. So it's, not, um, it's certainly not something that we'd aspire to. And we used to ask uh, many years ago for after a, a booking to rate us on TripAdvisor. I mean, if the guide asked the same, hey, please rate us on TripAdvisor if you enjoy the tour, I don't see anything wrong in that. Obviously, if you ask 13 times, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Mm. Yeah. So look, really, really quick, we have a few seconds left, but I would just like to go down the road, each of you. You know, so, much, so often the conversation around OTAs and distribution in our market is framed in a contentious light, and there's debate, and I mean, certainly that's important, we have to have that, but sometimes there's so much focus on that, and there's so much news, but there's also important, I mean, there's a reason why OTAs are growing, 
there's a way to, to use them. I'd just like to get a quick perspective, just you know, from each of you, maybe Simone will start with you. If there's like one piece of advice, what an op every operator needs to know about thinking about OTAs, and like it asked, just keep it you know, quite short, but what's one quick piece of advice? Uh, two things. Yeah? One for uh, the advice for the OTAs, uh, please uh, start sharing the brand of the operators. There is no harm in doing that. And the brand recognition uh, will be very valuable for all the small and big operators. Uh, you're not going to lose customers, but you're going to add an extra layer of uh, um, possibility to have choice. Customers will love it. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, regarding uh, uh, small operators, uh, choose uh, which one is the right OTA for yourself. Understand who's your customer and try to go with the OTA that really matches uh, your kind of product. Luke, really quick. One piece of advice? If you can do it um, without an OTA, don't use an OTA. <laughs> <laughs> and if they can bring you really add value in incremental revenue, incremental um, uh, visitors, and incremental quality, so also sharing this knowledge of reviews, then, then I think uh, you, sh you can really benefit from the OTAs. Okay. Okay. Jean-Marc? Uh, I think uh, try to, to think about what is good for you, what is good for your company. Um, and I, I think... Uh, uh, and discuss with the OTA. It's, this is a key point. They, ra they invest a lot of money all together uh, to have some their staff, market per market, city per cities per cities, and you have to talk to them. You have to to work with them on a regular basis. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, my advice. Yeah, engage with your OTAs, Andrew. Quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm certain that OTAs can provide really good value in terms of reach, um, brand recognition, and uh, and bookings as well for um, uh, for uh, many operators in this room. Uh, I think ultimately there's a calculation to be made, like where there's a cost to the business where working with an OTA works, and there's a cost where it doesn't. So I think this is really about finding that equilibrium. And you know, I think as we've said all the way through, like the only way to do that is with a real partnership. So. Awesome. <laughs>